So uh, I made somebody who had Amazon Prime download the books for me. So I'm gonna read them. Jeff Bezos, don't watch this. <laughs> Welcome back to Let Me in the Library. I'm Rachel, and today I'm going to do a very quick little... Is this really going to be quick? Is this really going to be little? But I'm going to try to do my July TBR. Hi. Yeah. So, it's already July. I know. And it's already partway through July. At least a week. I know. However, I have a lot to read. So, I may have gone a little bit overboard this month. Last month, I read some books, and it was good. And then this month, uh, Mick and Kristen were like, why don't we read this gargantuan behemoth? And I was like, okay, that means that I'll probably not read that many other books this month. But then, instead, I just picked like 30 more books that I decided I had to read this month because guess what? I'm a readathon queen and I can't stop. So let's talk about some books. So first of all, I am going to be reading The Priory of the Orange Tree with Mick and with Kristen. Um, we are supposed to read like 18 chapters per week until the end of the month. And guess which chapter I'm on? Starts with a Z, ends with an O, and it's Mr. Zero. I have not started yet. I am so sorry, guys. I am going to start reading real soon. I have D&D &D tonight, maybe tomorrow. I'm really sorry. There are three readathons that I am trying to participate in right now. First off, there is the Fuckathon, which is being run by Noria the Reader. Uh, if you don't know me, I love Noria. She is quite honestly the best. And if you don't know what the Fuckathon is, it is basically this readathon that runs through July in which you try to read books which stand against things that suck that you would want to say fuck you to. So one of those things would be like ableism or like white supremacy. So Noria has created this bingo board and you can make, instead of like actually trying to get bingo, you just have to make an F on the board. Now, we know me, extra as fuck. So this is what my F is gonna look like. And uh, it's all of them. That's what it is. In case I haven't made it clear by the graphic, it's all of them. So I'm gonna read all of them. This was like the first readathon I heard about when I joined BookTube. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to join BookTube because I thought it was so cool. So first off, uh, for the prompt of fuck ableism, I am going to read An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. I have not read any River Solomon's books yet, but uh, I have heard good things about this, especially during the Blackathon. Uh, readathon that was last month. Fuck ageism prompt, which I'm going to be reading a man called Uve. Uve? Uve? Let me know, because um, I'm wrong, but just let me know. Yeah, that's by Frederick Bachman, and I think this is about an old man who is like such a grump, and he is like kind of suicidal because his wife uh, died, and he's alone, and he doesn't have any joy left in life, and then I think about like a family who helps him find joy. I did see the movie, but I just kind of forgot. So um, I've heard the book is very good and it will make me cry. And I have not cried about a book in years. So I'm ready. Bring me the tears. Next up is Fuck Capitalism. And for that, I'm gonna be reading The Gilded Wolves, which I think actually also works for the Fuck Ableism prompt. I'm gonna try to buddy read this with Tammy from Tammy Tries to Read at some point, uh, I think maybe next week. And I'm not totally sure what this book is about, but I think it's like a heisty kind of thing, and I love heists, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, I think it's a pretty diverse cast, too, um, and it's not like your typical, I don't know, like Ocean's 8 kind of crew, so I'm excited about that, and I've heard good things. I've heard it's like Six of Crows, but it's definitely not like Six of Crows, so I'm not really sure what that means because I also haven't read that either, but one day I will. I promise, Ray, I will, just for you. The Fuck White Supremacy prompt, I'm going to be reading Black Klansman. Uh, by Ron Stallworth. I already read White Fragility this month by Robin D'Angelo, which I guess kind of could work for this prompt, but Robin D'Angelo is a white woman, and not that she doesn't have valuable things to say, because I actually thought the book was pretty good, but um, I thought it would make more sense for the, fi the pff, for the fuck white supremacy prompt if I actually picked a book by a black author, so that's why I am kind of tabling White Fragility, and I am going to be using Black Klansman. Uh, I saw the movie for this, and it was so good! 
oh my god. So I'm so excited to actually read the book that uh, details this whole thing. And if you don't know, and if you haven't watched the movie, you should. And it's about this guy who is black, who ends up kind of like tricking and infiltrating the KKK, which is like, what? It's really good. Please go watch it. That like Star Wars man in his, no, Star Wars? Star Wars, yeah, it's Star Wars. Some Star Wars man is in it. The, the one who's all like mopey guy, I don't know, he's that guy. Who's that guy? Is he a Sith? I don't know anything about Star Wars. He's some guy. I will put a picture of him over here so you can shame me in the comments. Um, then I will be doing the fuck book elitism prompt. Um, for that, I'm going to be reading Angels and Demons, which I finally have a physical book for. Yay! So I have not read this one, but I have read two of the other Robert Langdon books, and I really liked them. And then a couple years ago, I found out that people consider these books trash, which is very interesting, but I always really loved them. So um, basically, this prompt is just read whatever you think is like really fun and good, even though it doesn't fall into the category of like snobbery, like, I don't know, like, it's not a classic. It's not this very highbrow, very amazing, difficult to read, to understand book. Instead, it's just something that you like. So I love the Robert Langton books that I've read so far. So I would love to jump into this one because I heard it's actually supposed to be the best one. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Up next is the fuck gentrification prompt, and for that, I actually found out my hold for The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin is about to come in, and this will be my first N.K. Jemisin book. There's so many firsts here, this is gonna be so exciting. I'm like, I'm so pumped for all the books I'm gonna read this month. So, uh, I think this is supposed to be like, there are different kind of like avatars or something that make up different aspects of the city, or of different cities, maybe? I am very excited about that. I know there are a lot of uh, fellow booktubers, uh, friends of mine that love this book and love N.K. Jemisin, so I am very, very psyched to finally join the club. Next up is the Fuck Theological Fundamentalism and the Fuck Slut Shaming prompt, which I am combining into the book Freshwater by Akweke Amezi. And this is, I think, this follows a woman who is able to like embody different spirits or something and I don't know if it's her or it's another character, but I think one of those characters is like feeling herself and is like gonna fit that prompt for the fuck slut shaming thing. So uh, that'll be really cool. And then the group book is The Source of Self-Regard by Toni Morrison. Guess who else I have never read a book by? Toni Morrison. So I'm very excited for all of those things. And that is the fuckathon, which also has one more uh, prompt, which is to fuck with yourself. And that basically means just do something that's purely selfish just for yourself. And for that, I am actually going to refer to a readathon that I will be having a separate video for because, you know, I don't, I don't want to take up your whole afternoon with this video. But that is the uh, self care readathon, read -thon, which was made by Nikki Swift Reads, and it runs from June to August of this year and has all these different prompts that work for books. But there is also like a side part of it that's supposed to work for stuff to take care of yourself. So for instance, there's like a breath of fresh air, which is supposed to be like you go for a walk and that's the self-care part. Or breath of fresh air, the other one is like, read a book that's good. A book with a theme of renewal, rejuvenation, or growth. All right, a better example is laugh out loud. So like watch a funny movie is the self-care part or like read a really funny book is the other part. So I don't think you have to do like everything, but we know who I am as a person. And I think there are some prompts I've already kind of completed between what I've read in June and what I'm planning to read in July. But I will just talk about that in a separate video because uh, I got a lot to say about the next readathon that I'll be talking about, which is the Reading Rush. Reading Rush is hosted by Ariel and Raylene. And this is a readathon that runs between July 20th and July 26th. So for this, there are a couple of prompts, and I think you could probably find a way to get a book that fits for all of them, but um, I've only managed to do that with a couple of these. So the first prompt is to do a book whose cover matches your birthstone. I was born in July. In fact, my birthday is July 24th, so uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of draw my Amazon wish list in the description below if you feel so kind, because a lot of the books I want are like two bucks, and uh, if you enjoy my content, 
check it out. Anyway, uh, so my birthstone is a ruby for July. So I am going to read The Swallows, which is a book I started reading last month. And I just kind of like, I just started it and I didn't even realize I got 50 pages in right away because I was so absorbed in it and it was so cool. I think it's supposed to be about a teacher who actually sparks this gender war between uh, the students that are at this new school that she starts teaching at. I haven't gotten that far yet, but I have met the cast and they're very interesting. And I really like this book so far. So I'm really excited to jump back into that for this month if I have time, because then I have to do the starts with the. Um, so for this, I am probably going to do the Gilded Wolves because I think that matches up with the schedule for what Tammy and I were trying to do for that uh, buddy read. But it also may match up with The Vile Village, which I am planning to buddy read with my friend at Pigmy Puff Reads. We read um, The Ursat's Elevator last month, and we are kind of just like month by month reading the next Lemony Snicket book in a series of unfortunate events. And we are also watching the Netflix show, the episodes that match with those. A book that inspired the adaptation, I'm going to be reading A Man Called Uwe, as I mentioned before, because I did watch the movie already for that. Um, read the first book you touch. Oh, sh Isle Village. Great. All right, that's the one. Um, outside, I am probably just going to read a manga because I have six that I have to read this month. I did not finish all of the books I was supposed to read last month for the Weeb Club, which were uh, Antique Bakery volumes one through four that I'm reading with uh, Lois and with Lou. And I also am making them read a manga that I really like and I need to actually read the last two volumes of. And I mentioned this before, this is My Next Life as a Villainess, which follows this girl who realizes that she's the bad guy in a video game and wants to fix all the bad endings so that she doesn't like get exiled or die or something like that. And uh, it's very wholesome and it's really great. So I am making them read it with me and I need to read volumes four and five. So I will probably just pick one of those, jump outside, read it and come back in because it is hot, okay? A genre you want to read more of. So I would really like to read more Afrofuturism. And for this, I think an Unkindness of Ghosts works for that. Um, I haven't really read that much Afrofuturism. I think Kindred counts for this, which I read last month and I really enjoyed that. So I think that would be a very cool, like, exploration and, like, good dive into the genre to keep exploring it and check it out. And the last prompt is a different continent. So again, I'm going to use a man called Uwe because my man Uwe is working for all these prompts and it's great because I think this takes place in Sweden, which uh, is not where I live because I live in America. And that is North America. We're not just the only country on the continent. I think that's it for the readathons. So, of course, I couldn't be done now. Here are some other books that I want to read just cuz. Here is The 10,000 Doors of January. This is by Alex E. Haro. I've heard such good things about this book and I just never read it. And then I finally discovered that it was on my audiobook app. From the description, I feel like it's kind of like The Starless Sea, but not. If you've read The Starless Sea and you've read The 10,000 Doors of January, let me know how close those are or if like I'm just conflating the two maybe they're not similar at all then I also uh am I'm part way through The Girl Who Drank the Moon which is by Kelly Barnhill I think this is about a witch who um a lot of people like go and leave children in the woods to sacrifice to the witch but the witch is like what am I supposed to do with all these babies I don't eat babies why do you guys have this weird I don't this is not what I do. But I think she ends up raising one of these kids and that kid becomes like a witch who um, likes to drink the moon. I'm not really sure about that part. So um, yeah, I'm liking it so far. So I guess we'll see how that goes. And then uh, I did recently sign up for NetGalley and then request and receive like 40 books. So I need to hurry up and get to those. And one of those which I started is Teen Titans Beast Boy. I am a big Teen Titans fan ever since the show aired. There is The Guest List, which is by Lucy Foley. Um, again, everybody and their mother seems to love this book as a thriller, or I don't know if it's a domestic thriller, but it's like a whodunit kind of thing, and that is my jam. I love that. So I'm very psyched to get to that book. And I haven't read like a really thrilling kind of like, wow, mystery this month yet. So I love that. Redemption Indigo by Karen Lord was recommended to me by Angela at Literature Science Alliance, so I also want to read that. To be Taught Fortunate by Becky Chambers. That uh, is the first book I will have read by Becky Chambers. Let's count all the authors that I haven't read. 
their books of yeah look i'm getting cultured okay i'm like call me chobani i'm trying to get cultured i don't know much about that book either but i think it's like a bunch of astronauts that go out in space and they like send a single letter out about how important it is to just like learn and be open and Katie, tell me how wrong I am about this. Um, then I also want to try to get to Ark by Veronica Roth and the rest of the Forward series because this was recently free if you had Amazon Prime. So uh, I made somebody who had Amazon Prime download the books for me. So I'm gonna read them. Jeff Bezos, don't watch this. Then uh, I also would like to read a couple of books that I got from the library. We'll just see how many of these I get to or how many of these I just hoard in my home and hope that the library will not um, sue me for. This is why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. This is by Rennie Edo Lodge. I am very excited about this book. I started it on last month on my Kindle and then it expired because it was a library loan. So I just got the physical copy from my library and I am hoping to make some decent headway on it. I started reading, I think I was on like page 20 or something like that, and they were really interesting thoughts. So I know this is also continued in a podcast that Rennie Edo Lodge has, so I think this is a great way to like start that kind of lifelong learning. If you uh, have like read things like White Fragility and you were like, this is okay, but I kind of know this already, I think this kind of might be the sort of material that might be next that would be good for you um, based on what people have been telling me. Modern Love, which again has a podcast. Modern Love the Podcast is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. I don't like listening to like people's romances most of the time because I think they're not very interesting or they're very formulaic and like whatever if they're fictional romances. But real life romance actually can be very interesting depending on um, the circumstance or sometimes the fact that love is not purely romantic but it's also platonic and it's also familial and there are so many different stories that uh, people have written about that are either tragic or heartwarming or they make you feel things. So I definitely recommend the podcast and that is why I'm so excited to finally get to the book, which doesn't seem to be too terribly long. Modern Love, the podcast, is based on the Modern Love column that is in the New York Times and people submit their stories and the best ones are picked and read by famous people who lend their voice to the show to read the story and then talk about why they picked the story. And then they also do an interview with the person who wrote the story as well and the editor. So I think this will kind of like dive into that kind of same sort of thing. And then um, this again, podcast time, because uh, I love my podcasts. Happy Fat by Sophie Hagen. I love Sophie Hagen very much. I first discovered them through uh, the Guilty Feminist podcast, which is like maybe one of my favorite podcasts of all time, truly. Um, it is so, 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 so good. It is for everybody and it is so good. Sophie Hagen was one of the hosts for a while until eventually they left. And now uh, Deborah Francis White continues to host it and it is valuable education. I absolutely recommend it. It will literally change your life. Please go listen to it. It's the best. Sophie Hagen wrote this book. They are a comedian. They talk about what it's like to live in a fat phobic world because through much of our lives uh, we consider that people who are fat are bad. Or if someone says I am fat you say no you're beautiful instead of saying well being fat is not not beautiful. You can be fat and you can be beautiful. So it kind of sucks when you act like they're polar opposites because you're denying someone's reality and we need to like change our idea of what body positivity is. In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. I did read her book The Dinner List a little while ago and uh, it went in a direction that I wasn't expecting and it kind of surprised me in I think in a good way but also I was like this was good but I will not read this again. So I think this might also be the same thing where it kind of like wrenches at your heart in a way you don't expect. Oh shit. Oh shit. Okay so this is about this woman and she is like everything's mapped out, my life is perfect, yeah. And then she wakes up one day and she is living in a totally different house with a different ring on her finger, married to a different guy that she was expecting and it's five years later. She gets transported back to her regular time and then she's like, but I know the future. What? So I'm not really sure how she's going to react to that because I think she lives very like by the numbers and like she plans everything but now everything is so unexpected so she's gonna have to cope with that. So that's one of those. Um, also there is Authority by Jeff Vandermeer. I did read Annihilation a couple months ago and loved it very much. 
and uh, I was supposed to be doing a buddy read with my friend that uh, kind of fell through. So I think we're just kind of like reading it when we can, but I'm very excited about this. Ben Reads Books has also been saying how good this series is as a whole. So I definitely, definitely, definitely want to continue it because Annihilation was one of my favorite books that I read this year. Then I also have This Is How You Lose the Time War, which I've heard excellent, excellent things about. This is supposed to be like between two time travel agents that are maybe like spies or something and they end up writing letters to each other but then I think it ends up being like a romance and I think it's a sapphic romance which is like whoa so yeah uh it's a pretty short one but I am very 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 excited about this considering all the positive reviews that I've gotten from people on booktube and also my dad so that's cool and last of all a Song of Race and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown, which I requested through my library, and finally it has come through as an audiobook. So I am psyched to get to that and apparently have my heart broken because I think some terrible things happen to the characters at the end, and then I will be very upset and waiting for the sequel, which will be in a long time, I think next year, because this book just dropped. So uh, I do have the bookmark and a couple other pieces of merch, and very excitingly, um, the author has also sent out all of the early supporters a special story for helping to support the early release of the book. So I will also have that little short story. Um, I don't think it's going to be on like Goodreads or anything like that, but I'm very, 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 very excited about that. So many books to read. Again, I will need to read this bad boy um, at some point. He is such a bad boy and he is 800 pages. So <sighs> I don't know. I will try. I will do my best. I will be leaving all of the aforementioned people's channels in the description box below, as well as that Amazon wish list. Again, just if you feel like it, you do not have to. I still appreciate you. As a subscriber, as a friend, you are awesome. Thanks so much for joining me once again for this very insane, ambitious TBR. Uh, I do appreciate it. If you have read any of these books, uh, let me know if you liked them, if you want to read them, if you didn't like them, please keep it spoiler free. I would appreciate that. And uh, yeah, that would be so cool if you uh, subscribed and liked this video and left me a cool comment and just let me know that you're here. So yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching. I'm Rachel. This is Let Me in the Library and I'll see ya next time.